Welcome back to Books with Brandywine. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Henry VI, Part 1. I just finished reading this book, and there weren't, like, too much about it. It's pretty straightforward. There's wars. There's kings. It, it's history. But basically, it follows about 20-year period. It doesn't seem, as usual, it doesn't seem like 20 years in the play, but I looked up a little bit about Henry VI to see his timeline in real life, and it looks like it covers about 20 years. Because it starts when his father died, and he's going to be crowned the new king, which in real life his father died when he was nine months old. And then it ends when he's been engaged to Margaret. And so that that was about 20 years and I at first like it really bothered me because it's called Henry the sixth but Henry the sixth appears maybe like three times in the book and he's only there for like a second but then when I went back and looked at his timeline and realized he was nine months old when it started that kind of made sense <laughs> so the most of this book follows the war between England and France uh, King Charles well, I guess he wasn't king yet, but Charles of France is trying to take back France from England and be crowned the king of France. And England does not want to let go of their land in France, and so they've been fighting back and forth. Uh, Joan of Arc is in this book. I did not know she was going to be in it, so when she showed up, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but she is uh, painted in a very bad light in this book because she... Uh, is you know she's the patron saint of France, but because this book is or this play was written from the point of view of England, they portray her as speaking with devils and evil spirits and trying to use them to help the French win the war. And it does uh, cover her being burned at the stake. And up until then, like she was pretty, like her character was fine up until that point. But like just before she gets captured. And then while she's like begging for her life and being totally contradictory and stuff, uh, that it just, it really, really looked bad. And so I was really surprised she was in it though. And I don't really know much about her besides the fact that she helped France. And so I had to look up her a little bit. I didn't know that she was only 19 years old when she was, uh, fighting for France. Um, but like, I did, I thought he was pretty cool in this book. Like, she faced off in single, like, combat against some of the guys and won multiple times. And so I thought she was pretty awesome until, like, just before she died when she stopped being awesome as far as the things her character was saying. You know, he started really, like, she went from being super, super awesome to him painting her in a very, very bad light. So, but I did, I thought I enjoyed the book. It is, uh said to be one of his weakest plays. I thought it was okay. I thought uh, it was very fast. Not much really happens. Like I said, it's, it's straightforward. It's war. And so, like, it's not like Hamlet or something where there's all that drama. It's just, it's straightforward. It's war. And so, I, I enjoyed reading it. I probably wouldn't necessarily pick it up again because I still have so many other Shakespeare books to go through, but I, I did get to enjoy reading it. It is part of a three three books, um, Henry the Sixth, Part One, Two, and Three, and it seems like there's some debate whether like what order they were actually written in, and there is also debate as to whether Shakespeare it could be completely credited to writing this play uh, for I guess a few hundred years. I don't know how many hundred, I don't remember what year they said they, this was written. It was billed being completely to Shakespeare, him having no help. Uh, this is one of his earlier plays. And, but then in, okay, so I actually have the dates in here, I didn't even notice. Uh, so this was originally published in 1623. So obviously it was written before then, because that was in the first folio, which I believe was uh, produced posthumously, is that the word? And so about a hundred years later in 1734, Louis Theobald, I think is his name, was the first person to suggest that Shakespeare may not have been the sole writer of 
the Henry the Sixth Part One, and that he may have in fact collaborated with other people. It is now in like serious debate whether or not he collaborated with other people. Uh, some people believe that he completely wrote the play. Some people believe he only wrote 16% of the play. It is a heated debate as far as I could tell by what I was looking at online. So um, I have also, because of that reason, moved this into the slot of uh, for the Magical Readathon books written by multiple authors because I wanted to read it and because I didn't think I would have time to read Richard the Third, which I probably won't have time because the month is almost over. So this, as usual, the this play was based off of other works that were already written. And so the book that it is mainly based off of is The Union of the Two Noble and Illustri. I keep wanting to say illustrious, but it's illustri. Families of Lancaster and York by Edward Hall, and it was mostly based off of that one. And then it was also based off of the Chronicles of England, Scotland, and Ireland by Raphael Hollinshed, which Raphael Hollinshed also based his book off of the the first book, The Union of Two Noble. So he, I, I guess, like a, quite a few of his histories were actually based off of that second book, The Chronicles of England, Scotland, and Ireland. But this one was mostly based off of the two family, noble families. And so this book uh, does stop right when he's engaged to Margaret. Part two does pick up right when he marries Queen Margaret. So they, like, they, they're like that. They go straight from them. And I think that's pretty much all I had to say about Henry VI. Um, I'd say read it. I mean, they said that it's like his weakest play. But it is a fast play, and it, I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good summary of what was going on, of the anger between the nobles, of all the drama. Well, I guess, okay, so I said there was no drama, but there's a totally a ton of drama. Um, all the noble, like, the, especially um, Glau, Glauclus, Glauclester, Glauclester? I could, Glauchester? I could say it in my head, but I can't say it out loud. And Winchester, is that the name of the other guy? Uh, fight constantly. Like, they are at each other's throats. And it's to the point where even their servants are fighting each other. Uh, Gloucester, Gloucester, and Winchester. Yep, Bishop of Winchester, who actually becomes a cardinal towards the end of the book. And so they're, they're like, dude, they're button heads, man. And then, of course, there's Talbot, who's in France, who's mainly the person fighting the war for the king and uh, stuff that's going on with him. Uh, he is sounds to be an epic warrior who like can take on anyone and everyone is terrified of him. Just saying his name makes the French scared. So that is Henry VI, part one. I'm going I'm already started Henry VI, part two, and that that leaves me with two books that I have to read by the end of this month to finish the magical readathon. And I will be coming back later with a summary of a wrap up of the read magical readathon and a wrap up of the Shakespeare month to let you guys all know how it's, how it went. And I will see you guys tomorrow with another Shakespeare video. Bye.